So I can't be the only one that when I saw a notification pop up this morning that there'd been an announcement about Microsoft 365 Copilot that I thought that this may be coming out, it may have been released, or at the very least we might have a release date. But alas, that isn't the information that we got today. But we did get a lot of new information um, and certainly some interesting stuff to run through. So there was an early access program that was announced in the announcement that came out today, but we'll get onto that later because there was a lot of other interesting stuff. One of the highlights was the 2023 Work Trends Index. And this is a report that Microsoft has been doing over the course of the last few years. I think they started in 2020. And if you haven't checked this out yet, then I highly recommend heading over to their Work Lab website and taking a look at these reports as they're really very interesting. Um, but today they highlighted information from the 2023 report, which all seem to be centered around AI. This is a report that focuses on survey results from 31,000 respondents in 31 countries, alongside a lot of Microsoft 365 telemetry data. So there's certainly a lot of data that's going into the reporting they're providing. And as I've highlighted in videos before, Microsoft uses this data that it collects to really influence how it's developing its products. So I think it's important to remember that when something like Loom or Copilot is announced. It's not just coming out of nowhere, it's coming out of research that's being done with people who are using Microsoft 365 products and looking at the issues that they're running into in their work. So what was found in this year's report was really interesting and plays into this idea that's been highlighted again and again by Microsoft of we're all trying to do more with less. There was this feeling that people's workdays aren't in balance with people communicating that they spend 57% of their time communicating and only 43% of their time creating, when really they want that to be in the other balance and spending more time on creative value-adding tasks rather than just communicating about them. Having inefficient or too many meetings are number one and number three respectively in the top five obstacles to productivity. And it's interesting to see that of the top five obstacles that were listed, four of those five are directly impacted by technology solutions that are offered inside Microsoft 365 Copilot or elsewhere in Microsoft 365. It seems that fears about AI-based job cuts may be overblown, as two times more business leaders report seeing AI as a means to increase productivity than those who suggest it's a means to reduce headcount. And 29% are focused on using AI to reduce mundane work, which should mean that many jobs become more interesting and more fulfilling. There was a big focus communicated on digital debt. And when talking about digital debt, Microsoft is talking about the volume of data that we have through years of creating documents and chats and emails, with 62% of employees spending too much time searching for information or communicating about it versus deep thinking, creating and collaborating. And I think we can all see this in the organizations that we work in and with, that there's just so much information out there and the average worker has the knowledge that there's a document that tells them this or there's a chat thread that tells them that, but finding it has become the big problem. We are spending too much time looking for stuff and too little time using that stuff on things that truly matter or add value to our businesses. If content like this is useful to you, please do remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you can see immediately as soon as I put out my next one. Two thirds of employees don't have the time or energy to do their job. And that two thirds is three and a half times more likely to struggle with innovation. We're trying to do more with less, but it seems that we're failing. So the message is that this new age of AI will help with this. And Microsoft 365 Copilot is designed to address many of these challenges. But employees will also need new skills to understand and interact with these AI tools. So in the spirit of this research, Microsoft announced a bunch of new Microsoft 365 capabilities that we haven't seen before. Bringing Copilot into Whiteboard will accelerate innovation. You can give Copilot a prompt of what you're thinking about and it'll populate a series of ideas applied to the Whiteboard as sticky notes to get you started. 
Now, the example that's shown here seems to give a prompt that you could throw to Bing Chat and it would give much the same type of response. So it doesn't really highlight that there's any intelligence in here that's specifically about tailoring answers to your business, though this is implied from the fact that this is part of the Copilot product switch. Now, intelligently categorizing the content of the whiteboard seems really useful. It's a great way to bring forward ideas that might have been forgotten, neglected, or even ignored. And it seems really powerful to be able to rethink the conversation that you're having. But possibly the most useful feature is to summarize the whiteboard. Being able to summarize there and then and share this summary widely potentially adds a lot more value to those creative sessions. It can be hard for people who are outside of the session to really connect with a whiteboard retrospectively. And so having a written record that's generated there and then in the meeting, I think is going to be really helpful in organizations. Now I'm a OneNote user, so I'm really excited about the fact that Copilot is coming to OneNote. Again, this is about generating ideas and organizing information in place in the same way that it is in Whiteboard. But I'm personally looking forward to seeing how Copilot can help with my workflow in OneNote. And there are a bunch of other announcements. Outlook is getting content coaching and suggestions on sentiment and tone. PowerPoint is getting dial E powered image generation. And Loop is getting Copilot powered summaries. Most of this isn't really revolutionary in terms of capabilities versus what had previously been announced or what's already available elsewhere in Microsoft software, but it shows that the focus with Copilot's development is about adding value where you're at rather than breaking up your flow by getting you to switch gears into new apps. Now, when Copilot was first announced back in March, we learned that there was a very small group of companies that were already testing it. And we suspected that those were probably very large enterprise users. Today, we found out a little bit more about that and learned that of those 20 companies, there were organizations such as Chevron and Goodyear that had been involved and been testing it so far. And a lot of the feedback that they've been providing has actually led to further development. But while the rest of us continue to wait for Microsoft 365 Copilot, they also announced an intriguing new product designed to help every customer get AI ready. And the emphasis on the word every was part of Microsoft's release. So last week I released this video on my predictions around how Copilot will impact how we think about and store our business data. And it seems I wasn't too far off, as today Microsoft announced that it is starting to roll out semantic index for Copilot, which is expanding search capabilities across Microsoft 365. Let's take a look through the announcement. Semantic Index for Copilot creates a sophisticated map of your personal and company data, identifying relationships and making important connections. In fact, your brain works like a semantic index by encoding multiple words and pictures to create a larger conceptual map of information. For example, a semantic map of what the average person knows about elephants would include things like elephants have trunks and elephants travel in herds and elephants live in Africa. Today, people are mostly familiar so this is interesting in terms of the concept here because we see that there is still a lot of friction that exists in the way that search works. It doesn't really work logically for a lot of people because the way our search capabilities operate don't work in the same way that our brains do. However, this challenge of making search better is certainly not new, and we're all aware of the limitations that we've seen in Bing Chat or Bard or ChatGPT um, that has already got some people returning to plain old Google search. So it'll be interesting to see how these different type of capabilities actually play out with keyword search, which relies on exact words and phrases. So when you search for March sales report, you get a list of documents that include exactly those three words. But a semantic index understands that sales reports are produced by Kelly on the finance team and published each month as an Excel file. And it encodes all of these concepts and relationships between concepts in vectors in the index. Semantic Index for Copilot analyzes your data. That's all your emails, documents, calendar, chats, and more in the Microsoft Graph and uses a large language model or LLM to map all your content. 
Now I think it's really interesting how this is expressed here, as it's a little bit different to how this uh, technology was expressed when looking at the co-pilot system that I focused on in the last video that I put out on this topic. And this seems to suggest that instead of just using graph data or the Microsoft 365 data as a grounding tool for prompts that are going to be sent to a generic LLM in the same way that you can you can take large pieces of your company data you can send them to chat GPT and it will look at that information and give you some responses based on it this seems to be suggesting something a little bit different in that um, that data from Microsoft 365 is going to be indexed by the the LLM and maybe that LLM will be trained on a set of data that includes your business data and maybe this comes down to the recent news stories we've seen about how LLMs can actually be trained far more cheaply than was initially thought but I, I will be interested to see if we get any information that shows us what the difference is between this co-pilot semantic indexing and just the baseline co-pilot system and are we actually dealing with a, a company um, customized LLM at the point that we're using semantic index and the relationships between your content and you, searching through billions of vectors to find the most relevant results in milliseconds. It's what enables Microsoft 365 Copilot to deliver personalized, relevant, and actionable responses, and do so in a secure, compliant, privacy-preserving way. Semantic Index for Copilot enables every organization to be So that's AI pretty ready. interesting, but I still return to the crux of my earlier video, which is the limits of this is what data is inside your Microsoft 365 tenant. Um, Copilot's capabilities around search, around this semantic indexing may be great, but if you rely on data that's in third-party apps that Microsoft 365 doesn't talk to for a lot of what you do, then this isn't going to work for you. So I'm still waiting to hear if Microsoft is going to bring forth any technologies or any integrations that are going to help people that don't simply rely on Microsoft 365, or if it's a situation where if you choose to use QuickBooks for invoicing instead of employing uh, Dynamics 365 Business Central, you're just kind of out of luck when it comes to um, Copilot being able to answer questions about your customer accounts. Now, one of the interesting facets of this Copilot Semantic Index announcement was the licensing that was highlighted around it, in that it was specifically highlighted that this will be a capability for Enterprise E3 and Enterprise E5 licenses. So I'm not sure if that means that those Enterprise E3 and E5 licenses will get semantic indexing for their search anyway whether they choose to use copilot or not or whether organizations on enterprise licenses will get a different flavor of copilot than those on different types of licenses and if you want full copilot with full indexing capabilities then you're going to have to shell out for an e3 or e5 license even if you're a smaller organization that's using something like business standard or business premium now let's talk about what was announced in terms of access so what was announced today was an early access program and there's going to be 600 participants and those participants are invitation only so i think that probably implies that at this stage your organization hasn't received some communication from microsoft saying hey would you like to try out copilot for Microsoft 365, then you're not going to be getting this anytime soon. The other interesting thing that was highlighted was that this early access program will be paid. Now, I know there's been a lot of people out there suggesting that Copilot is just going to be rolled in to your Microsoft 365 license and it's just going to be part of Microsoft 365. So I 
think the fact that this says that this is a paid early access program implies that that's not going to be the case. That there's going to be specific licensing for Copilot in the same way that there's specific licensing for Teams Premium. And if you want Copilot added on to your license, then you're gonna have to buy it separately. Now we don't yet know how much that's going to cost. We know that Teams Premium is about 10 bucks a month. So we might suggest that Copilot is going to have a lot more features than Teams Premium, so it might be even more expensive than that. But these add-on licenses range from a few dollars um, to 10 or 20 dollars. So I think we can expect any add-on to be in that kind of category. Now this doesn't really answer the question of what's going on with that semantic indexing and those E3 and E5 licenses though. Will Copilot be included in E3 and E5? Um, will it be an add-on to every type of license? Will there be different tiers of Copilot? Will there be different tiers of Copilot that you can only add on to certain licenses? We don't know that yet. What we do know is that it probably made logical sense that if you were going to see something like Teams Premium rolled into a license tier, then the one that you would see it in would have been E5. And Microsoft decided not to roll Teams Premium into E5. It's still an add-on at the E5 level. So if the decision has been made that they're going to charge for Copilot, then we can probably expect that there's going to be an upcharge on every type of license for at least some of of the capabilities. So it'll be interesting to see when we get that information, if there's going to be more information that comes out, or if there's going to be information that leaks out of this early access program. It's not really clear whether that's something that's gonna be under NDA or not with those organizations, uh, but it'll be interesting to see if any of that information comes out later on so that we can all understand and prepare for what the costs of Copilot are going to be. So hopefully this has been useful to you. I wanted to put out a quick video as soon as possible after this announcement to give you the update on the announcement that happened this morning. Um, so I apologize if this isn't quite as polished as some of the videos as I put out recently, uh, but that's the information. Please take a look at the links down in the description where you can see the full information from Microsoft as they announced this morning. And I will continue to keep you updated on this topic. Um, drop any comments or thoughts that you have down in the comments below. Um, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye.